Welcome to SAG AFTRA's Conversations at Home program. I'm Brandy Victorian, Senior Entertainment Editor at Essence. Before we speak to our guest today, I want to let you know that the foundation has set up a COVID relief fund in order to support thousands of union performers who are going through tough times. Since March, thanks to your donations, the foundation has given more than $6.1 million in emergency aid to more than 6,600 performers and their families. If you are a SAG after member and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video, and we thank you for your support. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Rutina Wesley, Dalian Gardner, Kofi Sirabo, and Lauren Wolkstein of Queen Sugar. Hey, everybody, how are you? Doing well. How about you? Good. It's good to see you all. Everyone looking well. Um, we know, you know, for season five of Queen Sugar, things sort of got turned upside down and. Ava DuVernay, creator of the show, really decided to revamp the storyline and infuse COVID-19 um, into the plot line. And so, Lauren, I would love to start with you and ask what that change looked like from a production standpoint and what it really took to make this season happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unlike any other season we've seen, uh, unlike most television shows, actually. Um, and uh, we really had to make sure everyone was safe when we went back into production. Uh, and in order to do that, we tried to um, block shoot the whole season with only three directors. Usually the show would have about 10 episodic directors um, each season. And it's usually first time female filmmakers that are getting a chance to do episodic for the first time. Um, but in order to mitigate risk, since we were going back in a pandemic, we, uh, Ava decided to have three directors total. Um, Sierra Glad, uh, me and Lisa France were the three directors. Um, and so we went back uh, and uh, decided to have everyone potted up. Um, the entire cast was potted so that we would make sure that uh, we could shoot out storylines and keep everyone safe for the entire season. Um, so it was a, a completely different way of shooting than, yeah. <laughs> than ever before. Yeah, it's very all, oh, good. Sorry, for you all as actors, you know, how did that affect your preparation um, in coming back to the set? It was, a, it was a lot of material to uh, try to memorize and get through. Um, I don't think I've ever memorized that many pages <laughs> in, in two weeks. And like, but I did it and we, we all did it. Um, yeah. But it was challenging because, you know, at, it, at any given moment, depending on which episode you're shooting, you have to know where your character is. And so that got a little confusing sometimes. And thank God bless Lauren, because she helped us like stay on track with where our characters were at different <laughs> times and stuff so that we, you know, didn't get off. But um, it, it was really, really challenging. But it's kind of the beauty of it is that it's possible. And we actually did it. Um, and, and, we, and, and we got it done. I don't know if I'd like to do it again, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was fun. <laughs> like quarantine ended up being like our preparation. Mm. You know, to be honest, we didn't know when, what, where COVID was just, it was a phenomenon. Like everybody was kind of waiting. So to see we were coming back, then to find out how we were coming back, uh, like like story wise, and then what we were gonna have to do actually, like as far as staying in pods and hotel, it just it it, it kind of was like you're either with it <laughs> or you're not. You know what I'm saying? You either you just you you know. So I think everybody was with it. So like that's why we were able to get it done. And uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to shout out to the to the to the people behind the scenes because mm -hmm. they really had to structure it. You know, they had to like really create a system. You know, it was new. It was new, new to all of us. But it was fun. But like like Ruth said, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> I need part two. I'm good. <laughs> I, I was gonna say that uh, the best word that I found for all of it was an adventure. It was the yeah. adventure of shooting, shooting while COVID. You know. Yeah. Um, so that I think that uh, that was the spirit that everyone embraced, um, actors included, and that included how we approached the material was, you know, these were incredibly imperfect circumstances, unprecedented circumstances. So there was just, you were building the ladder as you were climbing is what it mm -hmm. felt like. Um, but I also feel like it did, um, there was a certain surrender that, that, you, that, that happened in the work or a certain surrender to what was happening to the circumstances that uh, lended itself, I think, to the material, you know, because the material is about 
uh, being in the era of COVID and all you can do is surrender. <laughs> so um, there, there was something uh, sort of freeing at, at times about that. Um, you could not be in control. You could not, you know, have things the way that we were all used to. Um, and sometimes that was actually a gift in, in, its, in itself um, to just really give over to a new process and, um, and to really, you know, get it done in a time where it is sort of a miracle that we, that we did. Yeah. Um, so again, definitely congrats and great thanks to um, the crew and to the production team for their ingenuity and I mean, they, I don't, I don't know how they slept. They were just constantly having to build the ladder even more than we were actually. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely the writing team, Ava and the, the showrunner, Anthony Sparks and co-executive producer, Norman Vance, they actually, I, it is mind blowing that they completely rewrote the season basically as we were going. It was, it was really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And in addition to COVID, um, you know, another focal issue of 2020, police brutality, is also infused into the storyline. And so I feel like you all are having to relive these very real issues that affect us all, you know, mentally as we are now, but also reliving them, you know, through your characters. Um, you know, how difficult was that for you just on a personal level? Like that's the nature of the show, you know, even season one. You know, for me personally, like robbing a liquor store, yeah. uh, my kid, that ain't that ain't really something I have on my personal, you know, <laughs> life list, you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like the show has always demanded us to pull from that place that, you know, most people kind of just keep private, you know, which is right, rightfully so. Um, so it, it was it was it was a line, you know, and I think that was the point of them aligning the uh, storyline with what was going on. So though it was challenging and triggering it was what we is like it's like the doctors being like i'm not going to work because it's covid it's like that's not how it works you know what i'm saying yeah it was um i think everything that i felt with the blm protests george floyd all of the emotions everything that i had in me that i was feeling um i was bl I'm blessed to be able to play nova where I can put it all into because she is a woman that is very much an activist. And, and, and so I got to pour it all into my work. Um, and that's kind of the best thing at the end of the day when you can use your work to sort of uh, heal, right? Uh, to have a cathartic experience, to get something out. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have this job because especially during the time right now, a lot of people aren't working. And then to be able to use my art to sort of, you know, get messages across and, and help other people. Um, I'm glad I have that vehicle right now because a lot of people don't have a vehicle to let it out in. So um, it, it's a blessing for me. I think I've been describing the experience of like reliving 2020 in mm -hmm. the story as this like giant processing time. You know, it was, there was so much that happened in that year. Um, I can't believe that that's like a month ago. There's so much that happened and um, and so little time really to process because things just kept kept going, kept going. But one thing that I remember is that first sort of two months of the pandemic where everyone really was un up in where it was like, no one's normalized this yet. No one's figured out how to do this right. Everyone's sort of just in the same sort of unknown of what's gonna happen. And then by the time that we shot it, there actually had been a normalizing of pandemic life. You know, there was a certain amount of like, we all figured out, oh, get onto Zoom. And we all figured out sort of what are the ways that we can do this outside of shooting a, a TV show in terms of our lives. And so it was interesting to be in that brain of like, I've normalized enough. I know that I need to wear a mask. I can't see my friends and family, like all those things, but then go back to what that first part was like when, it was this thing that's this virus and no one really knows what are we talking about and what's, what does pandemic mean? And, you know, that's sort of very early where your brain is like breaking, trying to process everything. That was really interesting to walk through that while still in it, but at a very different stage of it. Um, so it was, it was an interesting thing to revisit it and to sort of process it because we had no time to process it while we were in it. So that, that's really what I feel like the, the show is, 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 you know, a space for is um, 
is processing and, and, and transforming that experience instead of just sort of being traumatized by it. Yeah. And I think the progression of the characters is really just so masterfully done. You know, on some shows, you know, the story arc will go left or this kind of wild thing comes out of the blue just to kind of shake things up. But you kind of lose the core of the characters. And I feel like all of your characters and, you know, Darla, I buy there's just this real progression um, and you grow with the characters. Can you talk a little bit about just like the care um, and intentionality with that um, and, and how each of you feel like you've grown with the characters? You know, it's interesting. I feel like um, when, when I first started with Sugar, Charlie was this opportunity for me that I, I was so excited coming into it, not just because she's, you know, oh my gosh, she's such a, such a bad, you know, I don't know if I can curse here, but such a, you know, such a like, you know, ball buster. And she's, you know, she's just like, um, she's that girl, she's that woman. That actually was like, that's cool. But the part of it that I was most excited about was basically peeling her skin back and seeing that all that muscularity and that bloodiness and all that mess underneath that that we all have that we all when it when it comes down to it um and so that was actually my excitement what i didn't expect though was just how much i would learn from her and learn in the process in the dance of playing her um about i guess what it looks like to evolve and yeah. what it looks like to let yourself um and all parts of yourself uh, be fully whole and be accepted and be loved by you. And, um, and I think that's, that's part of what I've seen with her in addition to all the sort of, you know, ridiculous heroic <laughs> stuff that she's been up to and really how that's manifested in different worlds from she was a sports manager, then became a sugarcane farmer, then became a politician that, you know, it's just, and I, so I, I feel like um, she has represented this constant reinvention of self. And in the middle of that, like what's, what's most impressive to me about her isn't actually all those heroics that are outwardly so impressive to the world. What's most impressive is the way that she's journeyed inside and how she's gone from being fairly fractured inside to being, um, to being much more whole and much more connected to her family, to her community, um, so that's to me been the gift of the journey with Charlie so far. I love uh, I love listening to, listening to Don talk. It's it's, uh, <laughs> Shut up, it's so it's not nah, you just so articulate. Can you uh can you can you can you, can you kind of give me the question again? Uh, yeah, um, just about the progression of your character throughout the five seasons and um, you know how you feel about how the character has progressed and how you've also grown with the character. Yeah, see, I feel like it's really been a, a natural process because we didn't know where the characters were going, you know? So like every single episode and every single year has been like a discovery process. So like, uh, I know for me, putting yourself aside to like give space for this character, you know, and having to like give space for this character's emotions and to like really uh, compartmentalize it and try and like really say, okay, this is me. And that's Ralph Angel. So that really makes you have to look at you, you know, and like if that's your job and uh, your job is to give as much of yourself, it, it takes a lot of like uh, reflection, a lot of reflection, a lot of work and a lot of um, acceptance. You know, you got to be kind to yourself. You see in the show, like, you know, it's a show, but like you're watching people go through a lot of shit, you know, and like the journey of that. And like they have support systems and like, you know, they all have different types of support systems, but just to be able to navigate all of that and again, compartmentalize it and, uh, and, 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 and allow it to build you. Could it, it could either consume you and become a burden, which it does feel like some days or on other days, it could be the biggest blessing and the biggest lesson, but it's like cup half, half full or half empty, depending on how you look at it and how you approach it, you know? Um, for me, I think Man, that's one of the greatest things about playing Nova is that she's been so many places. We've seen her go through so much and learn so much about herself. Um, and I think I've learned, the biggest thing I've learned from Nova is I think care, how to care for those that you love. Um, and uh, one thing that happened with the book, you know, um, I feel like you know, Nova went around and asked for forgiveness before she asked for permission. And 
And um, I feel like you, you have to, when you're sharing someone else's story or anything like that, like you really do have to ask for that permission. You just, you just need to do it. Um, and I think, you know, Nola learned from that and which is why she's decided to do True Papers. And that's gonna be from her experience, from her heart. Um, because you should start with self first before you go telling somebody else's stuff and you haven't even really told, <laughs> your stuff, you know? So it was a huge like lesson and just like the care because I, I really love the way when she, when we see her care for her family and now we've seen her care for and try to heal Charlie, those moments, like I really love that because Nova is a healer. She has healed hands. And so um, I, I just, have, I've learned to sort of kind of use that power that I may even have of just being heal a person who is healing with their energy, depending on what yeah. type of energy you bring into the room, you can change someone else's energy. So um, she's taught me to walk in the light. <laughs> That's how I'll put it, yeah. Yeah, and you know, in addition to just the really great writing, you know, the series has really been modeled for just being so beautifully shot. Um, and, and you just see the beautiful tones of brown. Like I still remember um, being in a screener for episode one, season one, uh, and it opens with Nova and Cal, but everyone's like, ooh, like they just love seeing your skin um, there. And then also just the cadence, you know, that the plot lines aren't rushed and you really are like sitting with this trauma, you know, as the characters are. Lauren, can you kind of talk about um, just the, the direction in that with this, with this series? Yeah, well, we have an incredible crew. I mean, the best crew I think I've ever worked with. Um, our DPs, Antonio Cavalci and Bruce Francis Cole are just the best, like the best cinematographers to work with. Uh, and they've been on the, uh, Antonio was on, has been on the show since season one and kind of with Ava created the tone and the vision of the show. Um, and it's such uh, a special vision that is very unique to Queen Sugar. And I, I love working on the show. It's such a joy working with an extraordinary cast uh, and the best cast, but also, um, and the best actors, but, um, but also just um, working on a show that is so cinematic uh, and like what you're talking about really uh, having those reflections and having those pauses and moments that, that you rarely see on television, that you rarely see these kind of reflective moments with characters being alone and, and really thinking and, and being with their thoughts and, and with processing uh, everything they've gone through. And I think that's really what's so special. One of the many things that's special about Queen Sugar is the, how cinematic it is and how we're given as directors that those chances to kind of sit with characters and really be with characters and and not go quickly through so many moments but to really have these moments of reflection and uh really thinking about everything that that they're going through and and sitting with them yeah and you know you touched on this earlier that there were three women directors uh this season and i had talked to ava a couple of weeks ago and i told her she was like the rihanna of directing that she's just set this precedent now where you can't have a series, you know, without having women directors, yes. um, you know, at the helm. And so over the course of uh, five seasons, the show has hired 34 first time um, female filmmakers. Uh, you know, you have the three of you this season. Can you talk about just how rare of an occurrence that is um, in the industry and, and how you think that having uh, women directors at the helm has really just elevated the series? Well, first of all, shout to Lauren, um, <laughs> who got us through, who got us through uh, a very challenging, totally uh, adventure of a season. Um, so just to shout to you because your plate was extremely full um, and you had multiple episodes to direct in addition to making sure we got through. But um, that's actually been, you know, the experience for the last five years in that we've seen women in leadership. We've seen women at the helm. We've seen, we've seen women and heard as they talk to us, um, their lens and, and understood we were, we were um, participating in their lens coming to, coming to life. And I think there's, there's something um, that has been so incredibly special about that. One, it's reframed what being a director is literally if you like Ava was the first female director I worked with in television mm -hmm. and then I worked with 34 more you know it's like 
that, that completely shifted um, what's possible in terms of for yourself, for, um, you know, I think I looked up on Wikipedia sometime maybe six years ago or something like director, like what, what do they have if you just type in director on Wikipedia? And you know, it's, the, it's, it's that image. It's the uh, white haired white guy sitting behind, you know, a camera and you're like, right, this is completely transformed that and challenged mm -hmm. that, that image as the definitive image. And I think in doing that, um, it's also not just open the door for women, but it's, it's, it's actually open the door just to those who have not been centered, who have, who've been marginalized, who've been um, not given the, the privilege and the, and the entry um, traditionally and conventionally. So I, I, it's been actually an emotional thing for me personally to be an actor who is taught in conversation with the person who has their hand on the joystick of, of all of it. And that person being women of all kinds, right? They all have different styles. They all have different languages in terms of how they communicate, but there is a lens and a listening that's different. Mm -hmm. and, um, afforded those opportunities. So there's a different, there's a different, um, not just gratitude or sense of gratitude, but a different sense of opportunity and how do I open the door further for others? Because I know what it was to have the door closed. It's mm -hmm. been really extraordinary. To build on that, like one of the things people always say is like the show is very therapeutic or like <laughs> it's feeling or it makes me feel like this. And I'm like, Queen Sugar feels like a, a woman's love. You know what I'm saying? It's like your mother, your grandmother, your partner, like, you could feel that nurturing spirit in like the DNA of the show, you know, and it and it and it shows, you know, from the pace to the rhythm, um, to everything that happens behind the scenes, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's dope. And so, lastly, then I just want to get into what we may see um, for season five with each character. So, uh, you know, Dawn, you mentioned earlier your character is now this councilwoman. Uh, we saw this new adversary come into play at the end of last season. What can you kind of tell us about uh, storyline season five? Yeah, well, um, shout out to Amir Van because I'm not <laughs> only like a fangirl of hers, but I've <laughs> become like we've become like a little kindergarten playmates when we get <laughs> back together um so you get to see a bit of her um and like you said at the end of season four she's definitely a surprise presence mm -hmm. um and then also i think as we move into the season you're really seeing charlie in her in as a leader and i think that's some of the conversation that they were having in the show is what is it what does leadership look like right in in a totally unprecedented time um with some with real issues not just you know people getting sick and dying but people being protected and and communities and businesses being um really under threat because of the realities of shutting down and and how is she going to manage all of that um so i think that's part of what you see in her journey and then there's another part that that really we i don't think we've ever seen charlie uh in this way where she ends up going and why she ends up going there and when what happens to her um, and, and all, that, all that it brings up in her. Um, so there's, as in good Charlie fashion, there's a <laughs> lot of outward action and a lot of outward things to deal with, with, you know, Parker Campbell and, and being a new force in the, in the, in the world. Um, but there's also a deeply inward journey that she is forced to take, really, um, mm -hmm. and that she has to reckon with uh, by the end of the season. So I, I am excited to see um, how our viewers journey with her because it's definitely a challenging one. And I think it's really gonna, it's gonna challenge people to um, stay, stay in it, honestly, with her. But I think that there's, um, there's, great, there's great bravery in what she chooses to, to take on um, inwardly. Good. And then Rotina, you know, we saw at the end of last season, Nova and Calvin uh, seem to be moving forward with their relationship openly and, and, and legitimately. Can you talk about what will be explored there? Yeah, I mean, because, you know, he's he met the family. It's like, hey, uh, what are we going to do? Um, like, I, I mean, listen, quarantine brings out the best and worst in people. So we're going to see... Nova and Calvin really have to figure some things out and talk about some things that may be hard to talk about. 
Um, but because they love each other, they're willing to do it together. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see Nova move in ways we haven't seen her move before. I think she is also on a self kind of discovering, opening up journey of herself and her activism in the matters of her heart with her family. She's moving differently because yeah. I think she doesn't want another season four. <laughs> she doesn't want another one <laughs> with everybody hates me. So she's moving differently. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's growth. That's seeing that she's growing as a person. Um, and I, I too can't wait to see how people are gonna react to some of the things that you know she chooses to do or that she has to experience. Um, it's gonna be deep. That's all I got. that's all I, got. I know it's so lame, but I'm like, it's gonna be deep because last season was rough. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You think it was rough this season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kofi for Ralph Angel, you know, it seems like he's getting his his micro family back um together and you know we see some steamy scenes looks like in the trailer uh you know for next season what can you tell us with, <laughs> about where things go with Ralph Angel man stability once again he's really he's really trying to lock it in he's trying to he's trying to complete the vision um that I, I think he wishes he wishes his dad had for him you know he really is all about like following in his pop's footsteps and like he was, he, he, that, that farm has been such a reflection of um, his growth, you know, him being able to manage it and, you know, get it going and having his, 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 you know, his uh, program going and everything like, you know, now he's ready to just take those next steps of being a man. And I don't think he knows what that looks like. He doesn't have his father here to even uh, talk to him anymore or, or be that physical example. You know, he didn't grow up with his mother like that. You know, as much as he has that support from his sisters and, you know, um, Hollywood, who got his whole life that he's dealing with, you know, he's he's a young dude who's trying to figure it out and try and put the pieces together. And um, I think he's passionate. So he's always going to wear his heart on his sleeve and he's going to do what feels right. And uh, he's going to he's going to deal with what comes with that. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's the journey we watch him watch him take, which is is, is dope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Darla, the Darla, the Darla Ralph, the Ra Darla Ralph Angel saga is, yeah. it reminds me of real life too much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, they're so in love, you know? Yeah. And like in the real, realest like way, you know, yeah. they, like, after all the stuff they've been through for them to like continue to choose each other um, and do the work that it takes to choose each other that's a big deal, you know? And I think that's like, that's, those are the first steps of him kind of really locking in that manhood, you know, to him at least. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for your time today. Uh, super excited for Queen Sugar to come back Tuesday, February 16th at 8 p.m. on OWN. Uh, in the meantime, you can catch up on seasons one through four on Hulu. Uh, but on behalf of the foundation, I want to thank you all for really sharing your process and your path uh, with their audience and actors. Hope you have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>